today for my animal science video, I'm going to be talking about chickens and incubators. While there is no extra financial investment on broody hens, incubators can just, um, they tend to be more reliable. So broody hens may step on the eggs, or they could lose interest. Um, other chickens in the coop could step on the eggs. Um, the eggs might not be able to be turned if the broody hen is locked out of the coop, or things, things can just go wrong with a broody hen. You can actually obtain hatching eggs in a variety of ways. See, we have a breeding trio, trio here, and these guys provide eggs for us almost every day. So we um, mark the date and which coop it came from. Another way to obtain hatching eggs is online. So there are breeders online who have breeding trios, and they sell the eggs that they collect from the breeding trios like we do. The ideal temperature for an incubator is anywhere from 95 to 100 Fahrenheit and for the humidity it's 60 for the first 18 days and 65 to 70 for the last three. Without humidity the eggs get too dry and that can lead to shrink wrap which looks like this. The eggs need to be turned at least three times a day in order to have a successful hatch rate. The reason for this is to stop the embryo from sticking to the inner membrane of the egg and killing the chick. Another thing to notice is how the eggs are placed in the incubator. They're, the pointy side is down and the round side is up, and that's because the air sac um, on the round side of the egg, we want to prevent that from floating up with gravity and bringing bacteria closer to the embryo. A drowned chick is when a chicken is inside of the egg, and but inside of the incubator there is too much moisture or humidity, and so the chick cannot peep out of the egg, and so they just drown inside of the egg. Next is lockdown. You don't want to open the incubator or take any of the eggs out during these final three days. So the eggs are laid in a natural position and they are taken out of these egg trays and onto the um, the floor below, as you can see underneath the egg tray, um, to hatch. And if all has gone well, then after three days, they will hatch. So another thing to mention is that you shouldn't rush it. After one starts pipping, then you should wait 24 hours before starting to intervene because chances are they will make it and there will be nothing to worry about. And the chance that it does not make it, then you should try to gently pipe little bigger holes in there, but you should not try to get it out all at once because the membrane may still be stuck and it can rip the chick and cause it to bleed and die. After 24 hours of the third day, we move them to the brooder. Another thing I should talk about is candling. So candling happens around day seven and it checks the progress of how the egg is growing and maturing. So some things to look for in candling. If the conditions inside the incubator were not ideal or the egg simply wasn't fertile, then the egg can appear clear or porous like so. If the egg is growing and healthy and the conditions inside the incubator are ideal, then you should would definitely see blood vessels inside of the egg by day 7. So by day 18, by the lockdown period, the egg will be completely like dark inside. You won't really be able to actually see that there's anything inside of the egg at all. This is because the chick is taking up all the space inside.